Okay, so today we were uh, doing the uh, Chinese legalism, Han Feizi, and I believe uh, if somebody is totally uh, foreign or unfamiliar with Han Feizi, please let me know. I will assume people have some idea. Okay, if anybody have some uh, totally foreign to you, okay, so then let me know. You know, we can have a, a two minutes overview on this. Uh, don't worry if you I, don't need it. Go ahead. I I don't have any idea, but I'm really interested. But you don't need to slow down for me. I'll I'll uh, I I would I'm just happy to glean what I glean from what you talk about. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. Then you can use the chat, and I think we have a lot of people are waiting to answer from the chat group, and then uh, sometimes. Uh, the top people total. I'm very welcome for uh, the people who totally uh, unfamiliar with the subject because usually you will come with a very surprise, surprising question, and it's kind of challenging me. And then that's sometimes I learn a lot from answering this kind of question. So don't be, don't feel bad if you totally didn't, uh, don't understand and ask something totally out of blue, you know. Uh, so, okay, so next week I will continue on Confucianism metaphysics. And uh, the uh, Feng Yulan's writing in metaphysics has two parts. I think one is a uh, book of change, Yi Jing. Uh, the other one is about the doctor of, uh, uh, the doctrine of means, Zhong Yong. Uh, I probably will focus on the Zhong Yong, uh, the doc doctrine of mean more uh, than uh, book of change, but uh, I'm not sure, but uh, probably both, uh, we, we will see. And then uh, two weeks from now, uh, April 23rd, we're going to move the Han Dynasty, which is talking about Dong Zhong Su, uh, it's a, a Confucian scholar. And then, uh, uh, then if you are familiar with Western philosophy, you might see, at least I see this way, since the Ch uh, China become a one nation, one empire, and the philosophy become more like, uh, start to unite, right? Become the philosophy of institution, very similar to the Western development after the Roman empire, you start to find out, you know, uh, people's concern are different because they become a one nation, one standard. So that's the similarity I find out. And then we end of this month, uh, we will do is, uh, uh, Pin is going to continue on the Zhuangzi uh, reading, uh, the chapter two, the uh, equality of things, which is long chapter. So uh, he will continue on the uh, second part. So if you have, uh, Pin, are you co-host? Pin, are you co-host? I, uh, how can I tell? Uh, I find out I. I should be because I am. You and I are essentially the same Zoom account, right? I think. Yeah, I see. Uh, is anybody? Yeah, uh, I actually I'm co-host because I, I I have the admit button. So. Okay. Okay. Please. I must please, be co okay. please, yeah. please help me admit people. Yeah. So. Okay, yeah. So thank you. Okay. So let's start. Han Fei Zi. Uh, can you copy the screen? Okay, so uh, today we talk about Chinese legalism, Han Fei Zi, let, uh, let's start. So a few subjects that we are going to cover today. I, I don't think I am able to cover all of them. Okay, uh, I do it based on the Feng Yulan's writing. Look as it has a lot. And then uh, I will see uh, how far we can go. If we cannot uh, finish all of them, uh, I will stop somewhere and then I will make a, a second section on that. And so we'll start. So first let's start from the historical background. Okay. So I think if you join this group often, um, you, will, you, are, uh, you should be uh, familiar with this uh, chart. That's the, uh, I put a list of the famous uh, philosophers, uh, early Chinese philosophers, Laozi, Confucius, Mozi, Yangzu, Mencius, Zhuangzi, 
Xun Zi. And today we talk about Han Fei Zi. That's the first time in this year we talk about Han Fei Zi. So uh, I think we cover all of them and the Han Fei Zi is today we are going to cover. And the, during the historical background, right? So during this time, uh, about 500 BC, that's so-called the Zhou Dynasty, Eastern Zhou, and which is China's feud, uh, feudal system has start to break down. So the first period called Spring and the Autumn with the Confucius, Lao Tzu, uh, the Taoist uh, uh, master uh, live in this time. And then about start from 400 to about 300 BC, that's so-called the Warring State. During that time, China only had a seven uh, state. They fight in each other. So Han Feizi is the philosopher living on the later part of the warring state, which is before the Qin dynasty. Okay, Qin is the first time uh, China become a united uh, country. Okay, so uh, let's move on. So that's the historical background. And then uh, just quickly give you a map on the uh, spring and the autumn period time. And the China, that this here is Xi'an and the Beijing is here, Shanghai is here. So the, uh, they have uh, about over hundred or many hundred states during the spring and the autumn period. And then to around uh, 450 to 200 BC, uh, China already reduced to seven states. Okay, so, uh, Today we talk about legalism. Legalism start from the uh, east uh, in the uh, uh, Wei. I think it's in the Wei area. But uh, the 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 state, the kingdom who use this system and become successful is Qin, which is on the west side. Okay. So here we are going to uh, the famous legal legal. Uh, let's see this one. Okay. Uh, the legalism system basics uh, being used in the Qin, Qin uh, kingdom, which is on the west side. And the Confucius is on the Qi, which is on the east side. And the Taoism, okay, basics on the south side, like Lao Tzu or Zhuang Tzu. So they have a, a few geographic uh, uh, difference for different philosophies. Okay, so we put a picture on that, okay. Uh, I think two last months we talk about Xun Zi, and uh, today we talk about Han Fei. Uh, as you know, Han Fei is Xun Zi's student. So uh, uh, he is on the east side, which is in Qi area, but he nobody used him. So he traveled to uh, Qin and the, uh, uh, the, his philosopher got popular in Qin and eventually Qin united the entire uh, state. So we, I put this chart here so you can see uh, the idea. Okay, from here you can see basic, they all start from Confucius. Okay, so uh, I think two few weeks ago we talked about Confucius. Basics, we have uh, you can uh, consider the two branches, right? One is idealistic branch. Okay, which is mentions. Okay, and this one is also tax. Okay, so for southern years, next two southern years until we will introduce near Confucian uh, later. So basically, this line is also tax line. Okay, that's more idealistic. And another line is realistic uh, branch, which is Xunzi. So the easy way to tell is mentions more believe the human nature is good. That's just very uh, roughly believe, okay. And the Xunzi is more on the human nature is bad. So you need to focus on education. So Mencius become the uh, orthodox, but Xunzi has a two famous, stu famous students. One is Li Si and one is Han Fei Zi. And Li Si is become, uh, become the prime minister of the Qin dynasty. He is the master to design okay, uh, how to uh, Concord or the uh, uh, state that uh, united uh, uh, the entire China. And when he was a, uh, a prime minister, uh, Han Feizi 
is his classmate or because they all uh, the student of Xunzi. He join, uh, go to Qin and become an advisor for uh, the emperor of Qin. But the situation is Han Feizi is a starter. So he cannot speak well, okay? So it turn out he has to write. So the legalism system, let, let, let's see this chart. Okay, you will see this chart. I hope it's clear. Okay, I put this chart on the legal system because legalism is not a new system. It had been in uh, the system in uh, being a philosophy for have a long history. So if you look at the sixth school rule, which is a Confucian school, Nicosian, Taoism, Major, uh, Moism, and school of Nan, Yin Yang school. So this one is so-called the sixth famous school. Um, you will see Nicosian basically stuff on Guang, Guang, Guangzhong, which is 6000 BC, uh, 600 BC is earlier than Confucius. Um, but the writing, they don't have a lot of writing because they usually, they are the government administrator. So they are busy doing business, doing their job. So they don't have time and energy to write, to write book or to teach student. And we are lucky because Han Fei or, or we call Han Fei Zi <coughs> is a starter. So he cannot speak, cannot talk well, okay, adequate. So it turned out that he write a lot. And, and that's why we will, uh, when we read or try to understand the Chinese legalism, we will use, uh, we'll read the book uh, written by Han Feizi. We have uh, 55 chapters and it's very good writing. And that's why uh, Han Feizi, we will focus on that. But just have to know uh, Han Feizi, either he is a student of Xunzi, start from Confucius teaching, but the legacy system has been uh, have a long, uh, uh, long history. And another uh, story is about Han Feizi eventually died in the prison because Li Si is jealous about his classmate. So he put, since he's a prime minister and he worried about the Han Feizi uh, being, uh, uh, being used by the emperor. So he put him in the jail and eventually killed him. So, but Eventually, we have a lot of uh, writing from Han Feizi, and that's the story of, and that's the historical background. So I will stop here for about two minutes. If anyone have any question, and then uh, you think you uh, something not clear, and that's just a quick uh, uh, back, uh, historical background about the legal. So, any question or any comment? Okay, so let's move on. So next thing we are talking about the legalism and uh, uh, Confucius. Okay, so I think I'm going to do a little bit reverse from the uh, uh, from the Feng Yolan's writing. So let's go quickly. Go. Uh, I put this chart on the uh, feudalistic system. Okay, so. I think Feng Yulan make a good, very good conclusion about the Confucianism and the uh, legalism system. If we look at uh, during that time, the feudalist system, I think that's the same in China and the same in uh, Europe, right? In the Europe, probably this one last to the 18th, uh, 18th century. Okay. So first we have the uh, emperor and they have a prince and under the prince, they have a lord, okay? And of course, the real system is much more complex, but we can easily draw the uh, feudalistic system in this way, right? We have a king or emperor, we have a many, many prince, and then uh, they have a lord, then they have the minister. They all consider nobles, or we can consider as aristocrats, right? They all depend on the blood relationship. So, uh, so here, the lowest level, they are doing the real job. And then uh, if you are familiar with the Confucius teaching, we call it the Junzi. Okay, so that means, at that time means the minister, the low ranking uh, aristocrat. And they have a bunch of people, it's common people. And 
you can call it the small man. That's it, the Confucius teaching. Okay, so the, they have a common people and they have a genes. Uh, so, uh, so okay, so I think um, so that's the, the, the difference here, okay, aristocracy and uh, uh, common people. And how do we govern these two kinds of people? Basics, they have two things, one called Di, another one called Xin, and the Di means richer, right? So Confucius keep talking about richer, all right? So Di, the comments uh, is a Di, uh, the writing is Di, the richer, do not go down to the common people. And the Xin, which is a punishment, do not go up to the minister. So put this way, that means, uh, we will use ritual to govern, okay, all the aristocrats, okay, we will consider this the majority, which is the government office or uh, officers, you can consider this label, we use D, which is ritual, to uh, regulate their behavior, and then we use punishment, which is called xing, to govern or to control the common people, that's the traditional way to do it, then we come with the teaching, Okay, the key difference between Confucianism and uh, uh, legalism is Confucianism, Confucianism will consider, okay, how about use D to, to govern the common people also, because you give you the ritual, what's the right behavior, you can put the common people become jins. So the whole society will united uh, become, the, the, the gap we will close, right? Because Confucius believe if you teach the common people about the, which is the ritual, and they will be as good as Jinzi, so become united together. But legalism's consideration will be different. Legalism will consider how about we use punishment, which you call Xing, to govern all the people, include aristocrats. So, Basically, you lower the genes to the level of common people. We all use law or xing punishment to control. So the situation will be different here because before the aristocrats, they uh, don't get the punishment. Okay, They use regulation, ritual to control them. But according to the legalism system, the, uh, the lower ranking uh, officer or minister or genes will be governed by punishment. So that's start to, uh, they, even th they have the same purpose as uh, to uh, consolidate the whole society, but the method is different, right? The Confucius method is use the uh, richer to the common people and the, the uh, aristocrats, but the legalist consideration is use punishment uh, for the both for the aristocrats and the uh, common people. So I think uh, Feng Yulan make a very good uh, conclusion uh, on this one. And then I'm going to read this part. Uh, I means uh, uh, Feng Yulan. Feng Yulan said, I, po I pointed out at the beginning of this chapter that early con uh, Chinese feudalistic society, the nobles were governed according to the D but the common people only according to the punishment, which is Xing. Hence the Confucius insistence that not only the nobles, but the mass of people as well should be governed by the rather than by punishment was in fact a demand for a higher standard for conduct to be applied to the people. In this sense, Confucius were revolutionary. So, uh, Formula's idea, in general, we consider Confucianism as a, a conservative, right? He always want to go back to the old system, which is true. But in another way, we can also consider Confucianism as revolutionary because they put the, uh, the uh, education or ritual or the to the common people. In this way, uh, Feng Yulan considered Confucianism were revolutionary. Then we, uh, Feng Yulan talking about the legalist system. In legalist thought too, there were no class distinction. 
everyone was equal before law and the ruler. Instead of elevating the common people to a higher standard of uh, conduct, however, the legalists lower the nobles to a lower standard by discarding the and putting sole reliance on reward and the punishment for all alike. The Confucius idea are idealistic, while those of legalists are realistic. This is the reason why Chinese history, the Confucianist, uh, Confucianist have always accused the legalist of being mean and vulgar, while the legalists have accused the Confucius of being bookish and impractical. So I think this one is a good uh, comment about the legalism and Confucius from Feng Yulan. Uh, so uh, let's stop here for two minutes. If you have any question or any comment about the uh, uh, legalism and the Confucianism, Confucianist uh, and about uh, Feng Yulan's comment. Or you have any question, and that's time to. Uh, Jason. Yes, please. How would Confucian Confucianists deal with nobles then in terms of punishment? And in Chinese, there is a saying, Xing uh, how, Bu How would the Confucianists deal with this situation? You mean uh, during what time? <laughs> Do it uh, through the history? Uh, or, or, or just specifically during the particular time? Oh, I, I think you, you specifically talk about Xin Bu Sang Dai Fu. Based on my understanding, okay, uh, after a warring state, uh, the harsh punishment has been used for all the government. Uh, officer, okay, and then uh, so there's no complaint on the uh, the 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 punishment being used in the government officials, okay. But remember, after the Han Dynasty or after Qin Dynasty, technically Chinese China is no more feudalist system, okay. So this kind of Xin Bu Sang Dai Fu, okay, or this concept is gone because there's no more feudalist system. Only difference is they have an emperor, which is the son of heaven, and his relatives. All right. So the rest of people, you, have, you are working for the government or you are the common people. They, none of them okay, are, are aristocrats. They are regular people, just some people working for government, some people have no job title. That's the only difference. So your question basics doesn't exist after uh, uh, Qin Dynasty, after the United, uh, after China become one nation. So uh, do I answer? Hey, Jason. Yeah, please, Tim. Yeah, I totally agree with you. <laughs> uh, just to add uh, to what you said, the. You know, that was one part of Confucius uh, innovation, right? He redefined the word Junzi. Uh, yeah. Junzi for Confucius was uh, completely defined by your virtue. So if you're not virtuous, you're not the Junzi anyway. And uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Confucius totally defined this word. So for uh, uh, last 2,000 2, years, Junzi means, uh, uh, is not means the the doesn't means uh, aristocrat uh, aristocrat okay is also it means the person with virtue and then we consider Junzi as the uh, moral agent or moral model the role model okay so become Junzi so uh, from now on if we move on for the later part of uh, Chinese history uh, two words that you have to always remember one is Junzi one is a small man. So called Xiao Ren. Okay. So uh, Xiao Ren is the person don't doesn't have the virtue, okay, the Confucius virtue. And if the person has a virtue, then become a jun. So you will see in the political debate, and you will find out, you know, all point to the other side 
as 小人 and call themselves 君子 So let's become a, a typical neighbor for the uh, uh, for the people. Yeah, in, for the last. Uh, but Jason, period. yes, I, I understand. But even in that specific era, how will the Confucianists deal with like uh, Junzi? I I know they can redefine Junzi. If you commit some lapses, you could be termed as a xiaoren, and you could be punished accordingly. But sometimes. Junzi is not infallible. I would think they they also make mistakes. So how do you deal with this kind of situation? How would they deal with this kind of situation in that particular era? Not not later on. I mean, how do they? How did they deal with it? Oh, you mean during the warrior state before the uh 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 before the Han Han Dynasty? Yes, before the 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 uh the unification of China into a centralized state, no longer a bu bu、uh, feudal state. Yeah. Okay. Before this,、uh, I don't think Confucius' idea has ever been practiced. Okay, been ex,、uh, been used in any state. Okay, and then only state being used. Okay, put this way. Okay, legal system has been、uh, only being used in Qin, the empire, the、uh, kingdom of Qin. Okay, so. There's no Confucius teaching, and in this one we are talking about five termites. That's Han Fei's writing about five termites, and one of the termite. Termite means the bug who will damage the state.、Uh, you have to eliminate. One of the termite is Confucian scholars. Okay, so that's happened in the Qin, the state of Qin, and so、uh, if you ask how does Confucius scholar criticize. Uh, his view on this kind of system. Yeah, I, I don't think they have no view. They probably been uh, in, um, uh, killed or kicked out. So I think that probably my answer on that. <laughs>、uh, is your question how will Confucius want to deal with that? Is that、That's、the question? question? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can try to answer that a little bit.、Um, Confucius.、Uh, Believes right in, in ideally society. People you focus on education, so that people are、uh, there's enough good people in society that you you won't have any big problems. And that when there are、uh, digressions, it is the responsibility that every educated person has a social responsibility to try to correct others that are digressing. Uh, and do everything that you can, but I think punishment is not out of the question either. Because when Confucius was、uh, in government, one of the very famous stories was that he executed Shao Zhenmo, who Confucius believed was a phony, was a phony、uh, benevolent person, that he was、uh, doing things、uh, that looked good, made him look virtuous, but it was dis、uh, disingenuous. And I can't remember all the details of what crime this guy、uh, committed, but、uh, Confucius was well known for executing.、Uh, so that's that's what I, what what we can gather、uh, from his. Yeah,、story. thank you, Pin. Yeah. So uh, do, uh, I don't get your name. Uh, C. Uh... Uh, well, yeah, I'm C K. Yes. Oh, C K. Yes, C K. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, does does Pin and I answer your question? <laughs> uh, partially, yes. Is I I don't think even Confucius would know himself how how to deal with, uh, a regular transgressions or digressions by Junzi, <laughs> other than redefining Junzi constantly. <laughs> that that's true though. And then the easy way to deal with is when I punish you, then I will call you 小人 not Junzi. So you know that's the easy part. So. <laughs> yes, well, but the redefinition is in the hands of、uh, who redefines. You know. Well,、yeah. I think that's kind of part of the philosophy, right? With the legalists, they have very hard and rigid rules. You do this, you do that, and you're going to be successful. Whereas Confucianism is more into looking into your conscience and your heart, and that if you've cultivated yourself, hopefully, when you encounter things like that, you will do the right thing. Uh, it's more focused on the heart, but not about here's uh, a uh, recipe for life and you follow it. And then Tao is is even more so. It is even more amorphous. So.、Yeah.
Yeah, now uh, next session we will talk about this issue. Okay, this is about the reclamation of net because both Confucius uh, and legalism talking about net and they are important. And you will see how do Confucius and uh, 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 legalism look at the net in a different way. They all think about rectification rec uh, of net, but they deal in a different way. Okay, so let's move on uh, if you have no more question and let's move on to the next part. Let's give a little bit define or tell what is conf uh, legalism. So I just kind of summarize, you know, legalism is not jurisprudence like in the most people think, okay? okay. So that's the first thing we are thinking about. And it's a theory and the method of organization and the leadership. So we talk about the skill, the way, the method. And then basically talk about it's, it's kind of method, a technique, okay, a, a strategy, this kind of thing. And then uh, based on legalism belief, regular ordinary people following the legalism system can govern or rule a state. You don't need, you don't require a superman a powerful man to govern a state. You don't require a sage which has virtues to uh, govern a state. If we look at on the Western philosophy, the Machiavellians, okay, is the idea. If you read the Machia Machiavellian, um, uh, the prince, okay, you will find out there's a lot of similarity between uh, between legalism system and uh, the Machi uh, Machiavellianism. So if we talk about the contents, okay. So basics, it has a long history. And then um, in general, they have the three group uh, talk about in the legal system. And today we talk about Han Fei because Han Fei basics is consolidate this three uh, so-called school or you want to say group, okay. And a three different group. So first, uh, we call Shen Dao, okay, which is um, uh, talking about Shi. Shi means the power, the authority, potentiality, okay, like a pent up water on the mountain top. So you hold that position. Okay. So one example, if as an emperor or as a ruler, you have the power to punish or reward anyone. So without doing anything, just, just you pos possess this kind of power, reward and punishment, you are in the position of si. Okay. So I think that's the first concept in the uh, legal, legalist school. Second is basics we consider uh, from the Sun Bu Hai. That's a, uh, he talked about the Su. Su we can consider as a statecraft the method, okay, which to deal with people, to handling the people, okay, that's a su, okay, because the government, uh, governing, basically you have to, use, the ruler has used the people, the officer to uh, uh, govern the state. So you need some skill, that's so-called su. Okay. The third thing is sang, uh, from Sangyang is so-called fa uh, in the, translation we call law or regulation. So you have to put a written law okay, to uh, govern the state, not just like issue a command all the time. So that's the three school and the Han Feizi is the one uh, considered three and he considers three of them, uh, all of them are important. So uh, I'm going to quote, I think Feng Yulan also do it and in the Han Fei's writing chapter uh, 48, uh, the enlightened uh, ruler carry out his regulations, which is fa, as if it were heaven. So the fa, the law is just like heaven, okay? It's no, no wrong, okay? Handle people, which is su, as if he were a ghost, okay? That means unpredictable. Okay, so being like a heaven, he commit no wrong because, because you don't question the correctness 
of fa the the regulation. Okay, being like a ghost, he has no difficulties because ghost is invisible, unpredictable. So you use this way to handling people. So look at think about this situation. Han Fei is talking about you set up a law, okay, which like heaven, which is no wrong. Okay, nobody question about the regulation. When you deal with people, you being like a ghost, which is invisible, unpredictable. Okay, so that's the su you dealing with people. His su, okay, look again. He enforce because he hold this position, so called su, enforce his strict order, and nothing that he, he in kind of resist him. So basically, he talk about the fa the law and the, the how to handle in the people and stay in this position okay to enforce everything and in this way you can control or you can govern your uh, state that's the Han Fei's uh, teaching on the uh, legalism and this kind of philosophies actually is I think it's every uh, political system have this kind of thinking and it's not an invention. Han Fei is just put in the writing. So we know how do they think about uh, before. So it's easy, we will see, you know, uh, I just find it in the Western philosopher. There's many talk about this. So most famous would be the uh, Machiavelli, the, the prince, right? It, he talked about it is much safer to be feared than loved because, you know, so he talked about like as a, a prince, okay, it's better be feared, not be loved, okay, because feared would be easier and then you know, being loved and then you can uh, direct your punishment, okay, without, and nev it's never fail. Being loved, you will fail. That's Machiavelli's, uh, Machiavelli's teaching. And then in the uh, later, later in the uh, uh, Thomas Hobbes, right, the Via song. Okay, Leviathan. I right, talk about the punishment and the reward. Very similar. Okay, but he's a little bit different. You can see in the Thomas Hobbes talking about the punishment is an evil inflicted by a public authority, and one who has violated the law. The reward is granted to a subject by public authority. They take the form of gift, the reward given by the grace of authority, a salary, rewarding given in return for service. He's talking about giving reward for the people doing service and they give punishment for the, per, uh, for the people who violate the law. So uh, Thomas Hart has been later part at the, in, because he is uh, English. So he has a con another concept of uh, so-called the silence of law. So in this way, it's create some space. That's a little bit different than the legal system. And the more advanced, is like uh, is a Jeremy Benson, which uh, talk about introducing a principle of moral and the legislation. He's a lawyer, so he talk about the uh, principle of utility. He's a famous utilitarian uh, philosopher. He talk about nature has placed mankind under governance of two sovereign masters, pain and the pleasure. He talk about human nature and the govern us in all we do in the way. Okay. And then how do we deal with this, this one? Benson's idea is the business of government is to promote the happiness of society by punishing and rewarding. So because he's loyal, so he starts from this kind of, he called the two sovereign masters, pain and the pressure, a pain and the pressure, which is the human nature. And the later on, he set up the law, which is punishment and the reward. And he has a higher, um, uh, purpose, which is promote the happiness of the whole society. I just use this one as a reference, and then I hope uh, I will. Uh, you can use this one as a checkup. Okay, when we go further on the uh, uh, legal is Han Fei's uh, 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 philosophy, you will see how they are different. But we should forgive Han Fei because he's much early time. Uh, he is in the. 200, uh, 300 BC, and all this uh, Western philosophy is uh, 1500 years later.
So you will see uh, how it's different when they deal with the same subject. So we are going to, when uh, uh, Jeremy Benson talk, of, talk about the uh, two uh, sovereign and the same way Han Fei is talking about the human behavior, he talk about the two handles, okay? So that's the same thing uh, as uh, 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 Jeremy Benson is talking about, but he called it the two handles because that's two, sub, sub, uh, sub, uh, two sovereign is on the people. And then when you control the people, they become two handles in Han Fei's point of view. So he talked about human behavior. This one is talking about si, the position. You can imagine, right, as an uh, uh, emperor or ruler, you have the two handles and you are in the position of si, and you can control the entire state. In general, for governing way, okay, the so-called ordering uh, society, it is necessary, necessary to follow the nature disposition we call chin of human. Men have their likes and their dislikes and the less reward and the punishment can be utilized. Since reward and the punishment can be utilized, prohibition and the decrease can be established. The order of the state can be achieved. The, the ruler grasps these two handles, two handles of punishment and the reward in order to praise himself, the ruler, when you grasp these two handles, the ruler in the place of, in the position of power, which is shi, and thus what is commanded is impl implemented and what is prohibited cease. So when you uh, issue an executive order, people will follow it. When you prohibit something, you know, people will stop doing. So basics, what uh, a ruler has to do is using a, uh, in the position of si and the control the two handles. And the, he also talk about the other two things, okay, uh, fa and the su. Okay. So I will skip on the beginning about Guanzhong, okay, because he uh, used the- Madeline has her hand up. I don't know if you want to answer now or later. Madeline, you want to ask a question or? Yes, uh, it's a quick question, uh, but the questions are always quick. Uh, it's about the the word handles. Uh, I'm just wondering what kind of imagery it would evoke for a native Chinese reader. Would it be like handles like you would have on a plow or a, a, well, a well drill or the reins of an oxen? Or is it just a generic term for handle? Uh, he called erbing, okay, uh, in the Chinese. Earth. I think of a handle of handle. a tool. Tool, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Being just like handle. If you ride a bicycle, that's the handle. All right. I think so that's the, the meaning. But of course, there's no bicycle at, during that time. But you can consider some tool or, or some... Uh, yeah, a knife. You know, a knife has a handle. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, some kind Yeah, of... you can consider yeah. a knife. Uh, yeah, knife is not way. When I look at these words, uh, earth being to handle, uh, uh, my the my mind comes the uh, bicycle handle. Okay, so I think that's very you know you just handle left or right. So I think that's the mean. Yeah. Okay, let me go through this one for the fa and the su. Okay, okay, this one I think this one is very good writing and probably can explain fa and the su very well. Uh, the writing starts from the Guanzhong. Guanzhong, remember, that's the, uh, the ancestor. The, uh, it's very, very uh, ancient times, 600 BC, older than Confucius, uh, that we will consider as the, the beginning of the legalism. Okay. But forget about what he talked about. Uh, this one this is a comment on the uh, Guanzhong's writing, but the teaching is here. A law, which is far, is is that which is recorded on the registers set up in the government office and the pump promulgated among the people. All right, so far is something written, put in the record, okay? And everybody know what is far, what's the regulation. That's he talking about far. Su, the statecraft, 
is that which is hidden in your heart, in your chest. Okay, you have a soul. Okay, when you talk about uh, hidden in your heart, it means the, the, the ruler, the emperor in your heart, deal with many affairs and the secretly handle, in minister, handle the minister. So you secret, secretly handle your ministers and uh, hidden in your heart. Therefore, an enlightened, enlightened, an enlightened, um, an enlightened ruler speak about laws, and no people in his country don't know these laws. Okay, the ruler has talked about laws. Okay, the law is written. Nobody in the country doesn't know the law. Everybody knows the law. The words about laws are filled within the house. He said, not only filled, it means not every house filled with the words of the law. Opposite of the Su, okay, he used the, the, the enlightened uh, ruler, uses the statecraft, the Su. Even the people close to him never heard about his statecraft, his Su. The words about the uh, statecraft are not filled within the room. So the difference is fa is pub public, everybody knows. Okay. But su, the way you manage the people is hidden in your heart. And even the people very close to you doesn't know all right, what, what kind of uh, su you are using. So he draw the conclusion here. All right. He talked about in his rule of state, the sage does not depend on men doing good themselves, but bring it about that they can do no wrong. Within the frontier of a state, there are no more than 10 people who will do good of themselves. Nevertheless, if one bring it about that people can do no wrong, the entire state can, kept, can be kept peaceful. He who rule a state make use of the majority and neglects the few and the soul does not concern himself with virtue, but with the law. So it's here it's just opposite than the Confucius political teaching. You, he doesn't require a virtue as a ruler. Only thing you need is the law. So in this way, you don't need a moral standard for the ruler. Only thing you need is the law. Uh, someone has a question. Uh, yes, uh, if I might. Oh, oh, David, you have a question? Yes. Um, I visited China a couple of years ago. And I sat down with a, a group of lawyers to explore their criminal system. And they said that their criminal system is very different from what we have here. That if someone is accused of a crime, for example, if they commit uh, uh, a murder, uh, the court does not have a judge. It, it has a facilitator and the members of the jury would be the neighbors of the accused and the people that he works with and his friends and his doctor and all the people who know him. And they are the people that will pass judgment on the accused and decide uh, what the sentence would be, what would be an appropriate sentence. Well, okay, but then we spoke, I, I went with a group and we spoke to the lawyers about how there was some injustice in China, how there were some people put uh, incarcerated uh, for their religion, for example, and for speaking out. And their answer was, what about Tukey Sims? Now, Tukey Sims was an American he was a murderer and he was sentenced to death. He was in prison in California for 20 years 
And during those 20 years, he did a lot of good work. He uh, helped uh, establish schools and, and to achieve funding for schools. And he helped many thousands of children with their education. And so the Chinese lawyers said, what about Tukey Sims? You put him to death. If that happened in China, we would have set him free because of the good work that he did. Um, so I see that in China, the, the, the jury kind of usurps the fa, it can reset the fa and make the punishment not fit the crime, but fit the individual. And that brings me to the present. Okay, if I'm a tennis, if I'm a woman, if I'm a tennis player, and I accuse a minister of abusing me sexually, why is it that I don't get a trial? Why is it that I disappear for a week and then come forward and apologize? How do I analyze this situation using the framework you've given us of Chinese philosophy. Another question, this will be my last question. What about my friend of a friend in Seattle? She was a communist and she decided to leave the party and they took her for three days. And they re-educated her and let her go. Why wasn't she judged by a jury of her peers? Or was it deemed that her peers were the other members of the party? And she was not given an opportunity to say they are no longer my peers. OK, uh, David, OK. so. Uh... I understand your question, but um, let's put it, uh, let me make it clear something, okay? Uh, this one is totally not related to Chinese legal system, okay? It's, I know what you talking about the Chinese legal system, the, 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 the People's Republic of China, okay? The legal system, which is totally different than the Western system. Okay, I'm not saying I like it, and okay, so but that's it. Oh, I like it. Uh, yeah, that's your opinion. I respect it. Okay, but we I will address your concern later. But uh, this one is not related to the legal system, and we are talking about the philosophy of the legal legalism, and I don't see any uh, Chinese legal system is following this, okay? And uh, this one is more on the political, uh, 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 so-called statecraft, how to govern the state. And uh, that's the thing is different. But your question is very interesting about that. Like, I, I, I know you talk about Peng Shuai, which is totally, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> it's the tennis player in Seattle, that sounds like the feudalistic system to me. Yeah. Okay, you know, I there are those above well, and those below. Okay, let, let me put What does in. any of that have to do with this topic though? I I, I, I totally agree, it's, it, it will be a great discussion, but it's it's not, it's not nothing to do with the topic today. Only thing we related to- In either direction. Far, yeah, far and the day, if you, if I, it, when you are talking about the FA, you are referred to the uh, ju uh, jurisprudence system, right? The legal system. But here, the FA is not talking about the legal system. It's talking about the government the regulation, how to use this one. And the more important, the legal system is deal with the, uh, uh, the, the, the technique, the method of governing a state. Well, I think there's an underlying assumption that is actually not true, uh, Davi, is that what you said, I think what you didn't say is that there's an assumption that 
the system today in China is a product of Chinese culture. And there's some strong linkage to these philosophies 2,000 years ago. Uh, that is uh, that is a complicated matter, but it's uh, the the that linkage is actually not much. It's it's more or less absent. You know, you you have to keep in mind that the Chinese government today has a lot of influences that are not Chinese. Yeah, I think communism did not born out of China. So. Okay, so uh, let, uh, uh, Dave, and uh, the, I appreciate your question, and that's the question I'm very happy to discuss with you for another hour, but uh, I just have to focus on today's subject. And the day Yes, are we going to be subject to a multiple choice test? I mean, yeah. <laughs> is this a class, or are we going to go with the flow? We are going How to the flow. How is this flow. going? Yeah, okay. okay, so you are the first time here. Uh, here we are talking about, I know this, uh, the Asian philosophy, and if you relate to China, it's very, very controversial. And then people have different opinion. And I truly believe, I truly believe uh, the freedom of speech. So any opinion, I welcome. And I try not to have my opinion here. And then the way we work is, it's a recorded line. The way- well, I'm not we... judging, I'm not judging the system, okay? Yeah. I'm presenting facts, things that I heard, things that I saw, conversations that I had with uh, about 10 attorneys in, in, in Shanghai. You know, we met in one of those big, tall office buildings, and, and we talked about the civil and the legal systems as compared between the United States and China. I think okay. it's, it's, I'm, it's I'm not giving for... opinions. I'm giving information. It's yeah, healthy you. for this discussion in, in our experience that as soon as you start talking about current events, it becomes a political discussion, which is not really what this forum is about. This is a, a philosophy forum. So yeah. I think it's it, it works well to stay away from that. That's my, my personal take. Okay. So you sound like a Mason. If you're a Mason, you're not allowed to speak about religion or politics in the lodge. Okay. Okay, okay hold on. Hold on. That, We're that, in the lodge. No, Come you're out. everyone's allowed to say anything, but it's just not this forum is about. That's all. Okay, I'm hold on, saying, hold on. I'm uh, not Pete. telling anyone who what not to say or what to say. Okay, Pin, let's stop for, for a while. Okay. So uh Dave, uh Daniel, right? Okay. So okay, uh, listen to me for one, one time. Okay. Uh this one is not a class, this is a discussion group but I'm the host. So I will make sure I'm not judge anybody's opinion. Everybody can express opinion, but I have a sole judgment on whether or not uh, the, your subject is related to today's subject or not. Okay, mm -hmm. I hope you accept it. Okay, so, okay. so if it's unrelated, I have to stop because we have to respect other people who just sign up today's section. Two, two, two questions, if I may. Yeah, please, please. please. So if legalism uh, fits in with a monarchy, with a dictatorship and issues of republic or democracy, where would you put legalism on those uh, political or countries uh, rulers or the, or the way they function. On the, dictator, on the dictatorship, authoritative government definitely is not on the democratic system. Right, right. Okay, so, so, that's, so does legalism dovetail with any of these uh, structures? Okay, like monarchy, let's say, or somebody who mass power. That's the question, that's one aspect. And historically, where was it practiced and for how long? Yeah, I, in my opinion, has been practiced in China for last 2000 years, okay? Then in my opinion, even today, okay? Probably still do it, okay? So that's just, I'm saying the fact, I understand. I'm not saying I like it, okay? I'm saying that I support it, 
but that's the fact I'm going to tell you. So that, that's my answer. So it's okay, let's continue. So Madeline, you have a hands up. Uh, I was just going to uh, respond a little more to Davi, which okay. is that um, I've been coming to this group for a while. It is indeed ancient philosophy. Uh, many times we have started to veer off into contemporary politics and it did kind of go nowhere fast. Uh, so one recommendation is that there probably are a lot of meetup groups for contemporary Chinese politics or contemporary politics in general. Um, so if that's your main interest, you could do that and then also do this. Yeah, thank you, Madeline. And then uh, uh, just, I just probably some people are just first time. I just want to reinstate the rule. Okay, so basics, I have a sole uh, judgment. Okay, or whoever host has a sole judgment on whether or not the topic related uh, to uh, today's subject or not. If it's not related, then we move on. If it's related, we will find the time to discuss. So I just want to make sure it's clear. So let me finish uh, the, uh, what the, the section about what is legalism. Okay, so one thing important, just like uh, Daniel or Davi talked about, uh, concern about the fa, the legal issue. There's a little bit concern about the name, okay? Because at that time, most of people's concern is name. So so-called the rectification of name. So I just briefly put about the uh, three philosophers talking about the name, rectification of name, okay? Confucius, okay? Basics is when he, when Confucius, talking about the rectification of net. He's talking about the search, the actuality through the examination of net. So basically his concern is what should I do? So if I'm a father, okay, so I carry the name of father. So I have to do what father have to do. I'm a son, okay, I have to, I carry the name of son, okay. So I have to respect my father, I have to, uh, serve my father, okay, after my father passed away, I have to mourn for three years, okay, so that's the moral duty I have to do based on my name. That's Confucius talking about the rectification of name. Few weeks ago, we talked about Xunzi, who also uh, Confu uh, a Confucius uh, scholar, and personally, I probably consider him as the greatest Confucius uh, uh, scholar, Confucian scholar. He also talked about the name, okay, rectification of name. But he talking about is uh, name are made in order to denote the actuality. So basically he is talking about what name I should call him. Is this uh, 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 ruler, this king is the uh, uh, doing something terrible. I'm not going to call him king, uh, king. I'm calling him tyrant, okay? so. He kind of talking about the same thing, but in a different way. He is searching for the right name to label the person. And then and that's Xunzi's teaching. But when you turn to legalism, legalism also talk about rectification of name, but it become different, become demanding the actual conform with the name. So I give you a job, okay? So I'm going to judge you how well you do this job. I ask you to become a manager, okay? A human resource manager. So I want to make sure you do the job. I ask you to become, uh, uh, in, uh, become the chief engineer to build uh, this bridge. I'm going to make sure you really do the chief uh, uh, engineer's uh, bridge uh, to design the bridge. So I use this, the name to require what you are doing to, uh, to judge your performance. So I give you reward and the punishment. So on the surface, Confucius, uh, Confucius, Xunzi, and Han Fei, they all talk about the same thing, about the name. But if you think about it, because the, their position are different. So they still have the uh, different uh, uh, requirement okay, when they talk about rectification of name. So Xunzi, uh, I think Xunzi make a good, uh, uh, writing on this, names were made in order to denote actuality. So as to make 
distinction between the noble and the noble society and to distinguish simulating. So that's Xunzi's uh, talking because the name is to uh, uh, denote, used to denote the actuality. So that's the uh, thing about the, uh, uh, we talk about what is the uh, uh, legalism system. So any question on this one or anything you want to discuss about the uh, uh, legal, legalism system? Uh, uh, the, this section about what is the legalism, fa, su, and the si. Any comment, any question? Uh, Jason, uh, CK again. CK, please. I, I think lead, I think Han Feizi is historically known as the compiler and the great uh, uh, writer who fused these three concepts of fa shu shi together yes. in his writings and presented it to us in its form today mm -hmm. otherwise we wouldn't have uh, that much of an elaboration of what legalism is and a lot of what uh, we know about legalism actually came from han Feit. yes uh, if I don't know if this is a correct uh, understanding. Correct. <laughs> yeah, thank you for saying this. Yeah, because I supposed to say to make it clear at the beginning, but thank you for supplying this information. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah he is the compiler uh, uh, for this one. And just like I said before, he is a starter. Okay, so he didn't get a real job to do. So he has time. So he write a lot. So if he is not starter, he probably been hired by uh, the, the, the emperor of Qin and turn out that he is doing his job. So, <laughs> so we probably have no idea, you know, uh, what's the legalism in ancient China. So, you know, you know so. Uh, If I can say some more, sorry about Please? that. Um, yeah. There is a, a kind of interesting correlation between Machiavelli and Han Feizi in the sense from what I can tell uh, from my understanding. Machiavelli wrote in Il Principi, the, the prince in mm. Florence, when Florence fell to the Medici family yeah. um, in the six, early 16th century. And uh, he was writing when he was out of a job. Yeah, he, he wanted to get back into the good books of the Medici family to further his diplomatic career in order to idealistically, hopefully, eventually unite Italy under a strong monarch and expel the foreigners from Italian soil, particularly the French mm -hmm. and Spaniards. So he, he was a patriot at heart and he wrote The Prince. Uh, but Machiavelli, uh, Niccolo Machiavelli himself wasn't royalty. Uh, he, he was, uh, he was, I think, uh, I don't think he was even aristocracy, you know, he, he, he wasn't even an aristocrat, yeah. But Han Feizi was actually a prince of the state of Han, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, Han Feizi was a prince and he wanted to strengthen the state of Han because he saw that it was crumbling from within and you know, it was also under a lot of external pressures from surrounding states, particularly the state of Qin, who eventually, you know, ironically, he went to um, and took his, his, his writings and tried to implement them under Li Si. Um, but he was a prince and he wanted to strengthen the state of Han. That was his real intention. He he, he, he tried, but the, the, the ruler of Han, I think, didn't pay much attention to him. He, was, uh, he wasn't taken very seriously. And of course, he was a stutterer and that didn't do him any good. So he was of royalty and he went to another country, which, you know, which, which I, 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 some, some people, some scholars actually said that he was, he was sent on demand because the king of Qin, Ying Zheng, wanted him to wanted to see him. So he was sent on demand to, to, to the state of Qin from, from the state of Han. 
to uh, uh, because I mean uh, the, the 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 king of Qin wanted him to be uh, at his side to enlist his expertise in statecraft. Uh, but ironically, he died in the hands of his own uh, fellow uh, uh, classmate uh, or, or scholar, which, which in, a, in a way was a very tragic end to the prince. So that, that, that's, that's a kind of like strange correlation. Machiavelli wrote the prince, Han Fei, Han Fei was the prince who, who died. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you for the information. And actually, I also find it also interesting, right? During that time, in Machiavelli's uh, uh, time, uh, uh, Italy is kind of like a warring state, right? They have many, many uh, uh, princes, uh, principality, right? So they are fighting each other. And then, uh, and second thing is uh, Machiavelli writing the book, basics, the sole purpose is presented to the Dimitri family, right, as a ruler. Same as uh, Han Fei's mm -hmm. writing, his writing is to the emperor of Qin, Yin Zheng, okay. So basics, unlike Confucius or Taoism writing, they probably doing for more general or more not a specific people, but for, uh, Han Fei and the for Machiavelli, the audience are probably just one person, the person, right, the, the ruler. So that's a lot of similarity here. And that's always interesting to compare uh, Han Fei and uh, Machiavelli. Yeah. Thank you for the uh, information. Uh, Madam, please. Well, uh, fantastic presentation, Jason. Thank you. I love I love the comparisons to Western philosophy, the quotations, just everything. Um, I was thinking that uh, I like the the comment in uh, Feng Yolan's text, which which you had also brought up, that uh, in order for someone to apply the law even handedly, they would have to apply it to their friends and neighbors and relatives as well, and that this would take a sort of superhuman type of person. Um, and I was just thinking of, uh, I guess it was Marcus Aurelius, who, who was the first one in the West to say, let's apply the law even handedly to everyone. Um, so I don't know if they were taking place at the same time or not. I don't think that really matters. It, it seems like a, a, a phase that the civilizations went through. And I, the, um, there's something about the, the legalism, the, the, uh, the confirmation of, of names and actualities in the offices that people occupy. It's very appealing. Um, I wish that something, and it's kind of weird because this is a, a blueprint for how to set up a large impersonal bureaucracy mm -hmm. without favoritism. And that that would be considered to be sort of radical and forward looking uh, rather than, uh, you know, we sort of take it for granted these days and are continually shocked when that impartiality is violated and that's punishable by law. Um, anyway, I, I really liked the whole thing. Um, I wish it were the case that uh, inferior people did not uh, decided not to go forward in politics. And uh, that doesn't seem to be working very well here. Um, I'd also read that his idea was for the emperor to have an, to install an auditor, so to speak, someone who would sit with each official and uh, report on them. So he had a sort of um, his proposal was, was, was for this sort of lonely and paranoid emperor to sit back and employ a network of people who all suspected each other. Um, in some ways that is, it seems good. I can see things um, just for an example from today's news, which was that um, the last presidential administration was supposed to have reported all its foreign gifts but in fact, there are big gaps in the records and uh, people are trying to figure out what happened. So it was the 
In that case, it was the data didn't even make it to the auditing office, so to speak. So it would be as if the official were sort of doing things in secret without letting the emperor's watcher know. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm done. I was, I was going to say I'm kind of rambling, but I, I like this whole thing. I can see how it would apply very usefully, um, but also that it is kind of severe. Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, I have a story to tell, okay, about the uh, legalism, and uh, then probably can just answer all your three points, okay, about apply the law to all evenly, uh, the blueprint of the gov bureaucratic uh, government and about the auditing. So uh, I will, we have a few hands up, and I will, probably I will put on my story, I, okay, on, on this one. Okay. So uh, we have uh, Karen and uh, Joe. Karen, please. I think Joe is first. Okay, Joe, please. I just, I was wondering if you, uh, thank you for the presentation as well. I appreciate it. Um, one of the, the, you know, the things that I'm kind of interested in when it comes to, to Hanfei is this, this idea of human nature in general, and essentially that, uh, uh, you know, how he views that essentially human nature um it, that it, it's basically uh i'm trying to think through my what i'm trying to think is that um you know that it's essentially well actually can you expand on it his uh, his views on human nature for, uh, you mean uh, han phase han phase, uh, han phase yes he okay he's okay put this way his view on human nature again i just want to make it clear when i say something i i'm not saying i <laughs> i agree on the teaching i'm talking about what han fei talking about okay right so, okay, clear, clear. if you want to criticize criticize han fei don't criticize me okay so basically han fei consider people's human nature uh, as pen uh, okay, if you remember, recall what uh, Jeremy Benson talked about the two or so, uh, two sovereign, right? Right. Happiness and the pain, right? You will avoid the pain and you will pursue happiness. That's a human nature. And uh, Han Fei's view is exactly like what Jeremy Benson talked about. But Jeremy Benson leads to the the utilitarian pursue the happiness for the greatest people. But Han Fei, because his audience is monarchy, so he tell the monarchy, that's the human nature, pursue the happiness and avoid the pain. So you since they have these two human nature, so you have a two handle, reward and the punishment, then you can control everybody. So I think that's the Han Fei's view on uh, human nature. Same as Jeremy uh, Benson, but the solution is totally different. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Karen, please. Hi. Were you going to be saying more about the legalism and Taoism? Uh, because I I found that that was really fascinating. The in the chapter the comparison between the um, the Taoist uh, idea of non action. Um, and how the, the the government in the legalist school is sort of um, the the laws are everywhere. Everywhere knows the laws, but the you know the the governor or the ruler, the sovereign, sort of working best when they're almost invisible, right? When they're doing, they're not they're not doing any of the enforcement. They're just sort of monitoring and rewarding mm -hmm. and you know rewarding and punishing the, the people who are actually doing the things. Um, because I, I mean, what's what's interesting about this this whole concept of Wu Wei is that it makes sense that you know if you figure out the path of leading life, that you know, that's the best way to go. But it seems like there needs to be a lot to set up and figure out what is that best path, right? So how you know what are the laws where you can just sort of make sure everybody knows them and sit back and then just let. You know, let this process unfold. 
Yeah, thank you, Karen. Yeah, I want I, I will have a, a, a talk of this one because I put this agenda, but uh, I'm not sure we will run out of time, but if we run out of time, I will bring up the, the section, you know, uh, later part. Okay, because they have the two, uh, I think I plan to have a three, a two long reading. One is one is about, uh, uh, actually one short reading and, and the two long reading. Uh, the short reading is about Dao De Jing, about Wu Wei, and which compare with legalism talking about the Wu Wei. They both talk about, remember, compared to Confucius, Confucianism, both legalism and Confucianism talk about the recognition of name, but their view of the rectification of name are different, right? Both legalism and the Taoism, which I mean now, talk about Wu Wei, okay? But their Wu Wei are also different. That's the next thing I want to talk about. And then Zhuang Zi has a writing, a chapter called the Tao of the Heaven, and which talk about Wu Wei, but he has criticized. Now that's what Karen talking about. He talked, he lay out the nine different steps, okay? And to governing the state, okay? So another thing I'd like to talk about is the uh, Han Fei's writing, Five Termites. And I think personally, I really like this writing because it's logically correct. Well, when I say correct, it means in today modern westernized sense of writing is very convincing, well structured, and good logic behind it. So that's why I consider it's very good. So I like to go through this one. We may not have time to go through today, but I probably will put in. Uh, and uh, next week we'll talk about Confucius metaphysics. I may bring up uh, the uh, these two long reading about Taoism and uh, Confucius and Han Fei's five termites. Okay, on that. So we have a uh, CK and uh, Daniel. Okay, CK, please. Yeah, hi, Jason. I, I just thought I will uh, uh, sort of share my understanding of Han Fei's. I don't think if I'm if I'm not completely wrong that Han Fei actually wanted to work for the state of Qin. He was a Han, a, a prince of the state of Han, and he was a patriot at heart. He wanted to strengthen his motherland, his state of Han, against encroachments and against uh, all these like. Uh, failures and defeats inflicted upon the state of Han by the surrounding states, especially the state of Qin, which was why he wrote all these uh, writings. It was for the king of the state of Han, which he was trying to uh, convince and persuade to utilize his, uh, his, uh, his writings and, and, and his tactics and his strategies to strengthen the state of Han and eventually hold the state of Han's ground against these other warring states, the seven states, the other six states. Um, it was with great reluctance that he went to the state of Qin because he was forced to, he didn't want to go. You know, the, 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 the king at the time, it wasn't the emperor. Ying Zheng was just the king of Qin. He was an emperor. Uh, was uh, demanded that he went there. Uh, so the king of Han, because they, the, 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 the king, the, the, the Qin armies were breathing down their necks. So they had to, re, you know, they had to uh, uh, succumb to military pressures and other than cede territory to the state of Qin, also had to uh, send Han Fei uh, as um, a kind of present to, 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 to the king of Qin in order to, uh, for the king of Qin, Ying Zheng, to have access to his works and his thoughts and to implement them. That was the original uh, reason why he was in the state of Qin. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to strengthen the state of Qin because the state of Qin was uh, powerful enough. You know, it was a threat to his motherland. So at heart, he was a patriot. It's like Nico, Niccolo Machiavelli wouldn't want to work for the French. And he, you know, Niccolo Machiavelli wouldn't want to work, work for Spain either. So that, that I think is, a, is an important uh, difference, I think, you know, which I, I, I hope I, I'm not misrepresenting Han Fei, but that's what I, I understand from reading him. 
Um, uh, CK, I appreciate your uh, comment, and I have no way to tell you is it correct or incorrect uh, because it's so long ago. But definitely, your comment is uh, uh, valid in many many account, and I I really don't know what uh, Han Fei is really thinking about. He really want to work for Qin or or work for Han and. Yeah, I, 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 and another thing you mentioned on your pre previous comment about loyalty. And I think during that time, okay, loyalty to your own uh, state is probably not that important because at that time people traveling around and then whenever you can get your, uh, the, 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 you get your job done and you will move over there, you know, so, uh, the example is Confucius, right? He is from the state of Lu and he traveled around, he tried to get a job, you know, well, you can say he tried to promote his political uh, philosophy, but, you know, eventually he got his job in his home then, I mean, Confucius. So people traveling around and get their job and, and the, of course, people question, question your loyalty. I think the Si tried to put Han Fei in jail, this is told uh, the emperor of Qin, Han Fei is actually uh, loyal to uh, his own uh, state. That's why, you know, uh, the, the, the emperor of Qin put Han Fei in jail. Okay, so, you know, so we, we don't know, you know, at least I don't know, and somebody may know. So, you know, yeah, thank you, CK. Uh, Daniel, please. I'm, okay, it, I think in psychology, a lot of people would debate whether uh, re, uh, the two handles are equal, reward, reinforcement, and punishment. Because I think generally punishment will en engender fear and uh, reinforcement will promote, as you say, loyalty. And it might be easier for a ruler to control and use the handle of reinforcement more effectively than uh, punishment may not have as much of a revolution on a reinforcement schedule using that handle reward versus punishment. What are your thoughts about that? You mean me, myself? <laughs> no, well, or no, no, or no, no, not you yourself, but the, the, uh, the legalist, the legalism okay. uh, yes. philosophers, you know. Okay, yeah, I, I, I don't like punishment if you ask myself, okay. But uh, uh, I will say, Okay, uh, in our region, five termites, okay. Jason, you froze. Yeah, I was about to say, is that me or Jason? Okay. Uh, Jason, you froze. The last thing we heard was the words five termites. Okay, so right now it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Um, I have a second night to uh, uh, to talk. So if I'm froze, let me know. I have a second night. Okay. So, um, okay. So five termites. He, the story he talk about Han Fei talking about to answer uh, Daniel's question. Okay. Whether or not reward or punishment. He talk about this. He talk about a kid, uh, a young man who is doing bad thing. His teacher try to correct him teach him, no work. His parents use love, try to change him, no work. His neighbor try to advise, give him advice, no work. Until the government send the police, okay, try to arrest him, put him in jail. So he's scared. So he start to behave well. Okay, that's Han Fei's writing. Okay, so I hope, do I answer your question, Daniel? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think it was that simple, but uh, <laughs> today people might disagree with that philosophy. But oh yeah, yeah, I, that's why I'm telling you. If you yeah. ask my opinion, that's that's a different but, thing. But, but the, <laughs> the point is that it might be easier to rule through reinforcement because you have less chance of a revolution and uh, somebody trying to overthrow you. So yeah, yeah, if and you happy, you know. remember Machiavelli talking about this. The same thing as Han Fei. He talk about as an emperor, okay, as a prince. It's better to let people feel, not loved, right? So that's that's another way you can think about it. how does uh, 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 these people think it. 
Okay, I'm not no way to support which way is better, but I'm just trying to tell you what Han Fei is thinking and what Machiavelli is thinking. So, so uh, any other question? Um, I think I owe uh, Madeline a story. Okay. Um, Let's talk about, let's give about five minutes, okay? Uh, let me talk about a story, okay? Just, you know, if you are not clear, just, you know, interrupt me. Let me know uh, which part I'm not clear. Before, that, that's a wonderful story. I was thinking about making a presentation, but I, I just, so I, that's, that, let me try to uh, describe the story. Uh, uh, Qin become a strong country, okay? Uh, a, a strong country and united uh, the whole China. Okay, I think personal, I believe that's the person called Sangyang. Remember we talk about three school. Okay, Fa, Su, Si. Sangyang is the person talk about uh, uh, Fa. Okay, let me talk to this one, okay. Uh, okay, Sangyang, this person, okay, he focus on Fa. He is the person who walk for Qin Dynasty before, okay, before Han Feizi. And after he become a minister, a prime minister, Qin start to become a powerful country. Before him, him Qin is very kind of like, uh, uh, not really weak, barbarian in other people's view, okay. Sangyang was Wei, okay. Remember, the people all from the East, from the Wei, okay from the qi, uh, qi or wei, because there's more cultural, culturally advanced. So Qin always hire people from foreign country. Sangyang was wei, a young man, okay? And uh, he's not a, a prince. He's a low ranking uh, uh, aristocrat. He walked to uh, his boss, who is an uh, aristocrat, a prime minister. That's called him Gong Sun, okay? He's a prime minister of wei, okay? And then when Gong Sun was very old, he doing very well. And the Wei, the state of Wei is uh, st uh, very strong. And when Gong Sun is dying, the emperor of Wei is Gong Sun. Since you are dying, who can take your position after you die? Gong Sun tell the, the king of uh, Wei, I have a young man. His name is Sang Yang. He is a wonderful man and you can use him be a prime minister. The king of Wei said, come on, Sang Yang is a low ranking uh, aristocrat. At that time, people's thinking is the high position needs a high ranking uh, aristocrat. And for Sang Yang, uh, it's, it's no way to be a prime minister. So the king of Wei just not accepted. And the Gong Sun understand, okay, he's not accepting these people. Then he said, okay, if you are not going to hire him, then you'd better kill him. If he go to other states, it's dangerous for us. Okay, so then Gong Sun go back home since he's dying. He summoned Sang Yang to his, front, his bed and tell Sang Yang, he said, our emperor, Ask me who can take my job after I die. I recommend you. He rejected. Then I told him, if you re reject to hire you, I suggest him to kill you. Since I'm your boss, I have the responsible, okay, to tell you, okay, the emperor is going to kill you. Okay. And I also a uh, prime minister. So I also have the responsible to tell my emperor what's the best. That's, that's his uh, uh, advice to Sang Yang. He said, good luck, you'd better escape and I have no way to help you. But Sang Yang told him, don't worry, I will be safe. Our emperor will not listen to you to hire me and he will not listen to you to kill me. So time passed by, Gong Sun died and then uh, Sang Yang not being hired. And you can imagine, and an ambitious or smart young man not being used, feel frustrated. So at that time, Qin is using a lot of money to hire the smart, skillful people. So he traveled to Qin, got hired by the emperor of Qin, 
So he started to reform the whole country. So that's how the legal is going to put in the system. So his reformation, there's many stories about his reformation. Basically, he said, just like the Netherlands said, apply the law to all, including the prince, okay? And even, that's very important. And they, he really enforced law. Famous story is he put a, a, a lock, a wood on the east side of the city and they tell people, whoever carry this wood to the west side of the city, you got one bag of gold. And nobody listened to it. And he increased to two bags of gold. And one person said, okay, it won't harm, it will hurt me. So he bring to the, the other side and get reward. So people start to know, okay, whatever law said, we just follow. We don't question whether or not it makes sense or not. So the whole state of Qin get reformed. And then he start to rank all the people, the common people, okay? 19 ranking. Whenever you kill one enemy, you promote one rank. So the people start to have the job, okay? They have the purpose of living. They, they, as long as they got draft, they go to war, and they kill people, they got promoted, they got rewarded. So the, the, the nation gets stronger and stronger. And since his law, just like uh, 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 is applied to all, evenly, okay, even include the prince. So one day, the crown prince violated the law. Okay, it's not a severe. I think it's kind of like a writing horse on the royal court, this kind of uh, violation. According to Sang Yang's law, you have to get your nose cut off. But I, I believe at that time, nobody really dared to cut off the crown prince's nose, okay? So the solution is uh, get the crown prince, the teacher, and cut off his nose, okay? So that's the punishment, okay? So time goes by, when the emperor of Qin passed away, the crown prince become the emperor. So, Everybody know the first thing he want to do is kill Sang Yang, okay? Because Sang Yang want to cut off his nose. So Sang Yang, of course, know it. He tried to escape in the evening, tried to escape to the gate. The gatekeeper said, no, I cannot open the gate. Okay, after certain time, okay, no way to open the gate. That's the Sang Yang's law we have to follow. And Sang Yang say, I'm Sang Yang, okay? Open the door. He said, no, even Sang Yang have followed his own law. So he cannot escape. So get catched the second day and being quartered, killed, tortured, killed, okay, by the emperor. And the emperor killed Sang Yang, but still follow Sang Yang's law. And eventually, that's the later story, Han Fei, Li Si, and eventually Qin united the, the entire uh, China. So that's the story. And the end of the story is the Sangyang got killed, tortured. And the later time, all the Confucius for the next 2000 years, all the Confucian scholar use this story to criticize the legalism system. Because you set up the law and you kill yourself. So use this one to criticize legalism. So that's my story. Uh, I hope this story probably answer uh, most of the question about the uh, applied law and then uh, the bureaucratic system and then uh, how does the legal system view in, uh, uh, how does the Confucius see uh, the legal uh, system? So uh, any question or any comment on this one? We'll probably talk to the end. Uh, sorry, my story is a little bit long. And then uh, CK. Oh, that was. <laughs> CK, please. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say that when Shang Yang implemented his uh, legal reforms in the state of Qin, and when you said so rightly that it divided the common people into 19 categories, and mm -hmm. they were, that these people were motivated by gain on the battlefield. So they fought with all their might and with all their ferocity, which made the Qin armies at the time invincible in the field. But I think when they, his, his rewards were specific, 
they were supposed to take the heads of enemy soldiers, not civilians. I don't think he was involved, interested in killing civilians. I think that that had to be clear. When he's, he, he attacked, uh, the, the Qin army went out to attack uh, other people. These other people were other armies and they were beheading the, the, uh, the soldiers and the generals of these armies and not the, the civilian population. I think that's one thing I, I would like to- Thank, thank you, yeah, out. thank you yeah. for making it clear. Yeah, yeah, it's not go out to kill random people. Yeah, you are right, sorry, I, I'm not making it clear. Yeah, uh, any other comment, CK? No? Okay. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah, well, yeah, since I'm asked, I, when, when the Confucian is criticized, uh, the legalist, they use this story, I think in Chinese it's called zuo fa zi bi, yeah. isn't it? Uh, that, that's, that's the saying, right? Or another one is called zuo jian zi fu. I think that's also a similar uh, way yeah. of saying it, yeah. Yeah, that's right, zuo fa zi bi, basically refer to Sang Yang who make the law and kill yourself, okay? So basically that's it. Uh, for 2000 years, people use this saying, and the original is talking about Sang Yang, he make a law and kill himself. So. Uh, Mandarin, please. That was wonderful, Jason. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, I think we have about 10 minutes left. Okay, is there any comment? Anything about um, today? I do guys will only finish half of that and I can go over a little bit on the Taoism and then um, I just, I, I learned, I try not to be uh, rush and then uh, we will have uh, time to discuss and then try not to go over time. Okay, let's quickly talk about the, uh, since uh, Karen has a concern about Wu Wei, uh, I think we can uh, talk about the legalism and the Taoism and we leave another two long reading for the next section. And I probably try to surprise some of other, uh, reading okay for the next uh, section so we'll make another section about the uh, 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 legalism uh, reading so uh, if you are you are here today then doing that one have a more uh, uh, original text reading and if you didn't join today and you still have a way to just read the text and can understand what uh, legalism is talking about so this one is I copy from uh, Feng Yolan's writing Okay, just like his comparison between uh, Confucius, Confucianism and uh, legalism. And he has another writing co uh, compared to legalism and the Taoism. Taoism and the legalism represent the two extremes of Chinese thought. The Taoism maintained that man originally is completely innocent. Let's talk about human nature, okay? Uh, the legalist, on the other hand, uh, he is completely evil. I think evil may not be the right word, more on the uh, pursue happiness and uh, uh, avoid pain. Okay. The Taoism stood for absolute individual freedom, the legalist for the absolute the social control. Yet in the ideal non-action, so-called Wu Wei, the two extreme meet, both are promoting Wu Wei. And that is to say they have here, some common ground, okay? Again, here talking about Wu Wei. They look at the human nature in a different way. And based on these two different understand of human nature, they come with the same conclusion about Wu Wei. I talk about Wu Wei for the ruler. When you govern the state, you use Wu Wei. So let's think about a little bit on this. If you think about human are totally innocent, there's no good, no bad. They just try to survive, all right? So as a government, uh, as a ruler, the best way to do, according to Taoism teaching, is Wu Wei, you don't interfere their business. They will do their own. So they are more on the absolute individual freedom. But legalism, thinking about human nature is evil or pursue happiness and avoid pain. His concern to the uh, uh, ruler is if people are pursuing happiness and avoid pain, 
with limited resources, they have a social disorder. So what we need to do is bring back the social order. So the best way to control is to handle. And then you don't go interfere everything just like, you know, you are right, you are wrong, we do this, teach, teach just like Confucius teaching the people, don't do this, let's do this, I respect your parents, you know, love your brother, love your neighbor, thou shall not kill. No, no, that's too much work. Just set a law and enforce the law, have the people enforce the law. So as a ruler, you don't have to do anything. That's the legal is a kind of way. So you don't have to interrupt, just set a law, have the people do it. So you don't have to do anything and everything can be done. So we can read, okay, on the Taoism for the people who were in the uh, Tuesday uh, Tao Te Ching reading, okay, probably read this one before. And let me repeat on the chapter 37 and the 48, both talking about Wu Wei. So, Chapter 38 talking about the Tao is constantly acting Wu Wei, which is no action, and there's still nothing left undone. If the ruler can practice this, practice Wu Wei, all things can transform as they show. Okay, so think about this if the people are innocent, the ruler doesn't have to do anything, everything will work on himself. Okay. So, chapter 48 talking about practice Wu Wei, but nothing is left undone. So Wu Wei is not like this thing, you know, for basics, it's a no non-interruption, okay? So gain the world by constantly not interfering. Those who interfere cannot gain the world. So that's the teaching from the Taoism. So he is talking about Wu Wei in this way. So let's see how, uh, let me see. Okay, that's done. Okay, let's finish on this uh, page. That's how Han Fei talking about Wu Wei. And I just, I think it's also in the Feng Yulan's writing uh, on the chapter 29. He talk about just as sun and the moon shine forth. That's from Han Fei's Wu Wei, okay? Just like the sun and the moon shine forth, the four season progress, the clouds spread, the wind blow, and so does the ruler not encumbered his mind with knowledge, not encumbered himself with selfishness. He relied for good government on law, which is fa, and the statecraft, which is su, leave the right and the wrong to be dealt with through reward and the punishment, and the refer the lightness and the heaviness to the balance of scale. So he talked about the reward, the punishment, and just like a scale, right? Just and then just have the people do, doing this one. So that's Han Fei, the legal is kind of Wu Wei. So you talk about just like, you know, you hold in the Shi, so-called in the position, and then you don't have to do anything and everything and nothing left undone. So that's the uh, comparison between uh, legalism Wu Wei and the Taoism Wu Wei. So, there's a five minutes left and I think I will stop here. And if you have any comment and anything, and then uh, we can talk about this or ask any question. And then I think we will have a two more section. I will bring up um, next week, we talk about metaphysics. Then I think I will uh, talk, uh, have this read and I will find another chapter uh, to uh, supplement. So probably we will spend uh, same uh, one hour, uh, two hour to read uh, this three, uh, yeah, one Zhuangzi, one Han Fei, and then another Han Fei. So I think that would make the uh, another section. Yeah, any question, comment uh, for today? I hope I answer uh, Karen. Uh, Karen was interested. In yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank and you so much. Time, and the next time we will have uh, uh, more detail on the Zhuangzi's criticize on, uh, on uh, uh, legalism. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mary and the CK. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... 
I think that Han Fei isn't a complete pessimist about human nature because he did say that he thinks that there are probably 10 good men in every state, uh, <laughs> 10 men who will do, who will do good without you know, being threatened or rewarded basically just for its own sake. And so I thought that where he was going to go with that was that, you know, these are the people who should be put in charge. <laughs> but instead it seemed to be more like, look, let's just leave them alone. <laughs> Uh, they're they're going to be following the laws anyway, or actually maybe they won't be. Maybe they'll be Taoists, and um, and we'll just worry about everyone else. And so it was. Um, I guess I guess Confucianists would want to raise everyone to that level of those ten good men. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are. Definitely right, yeah. And then the, the, on the Confucius was, yeah, they have the 10 good men, right? And they tell the rest people, why don't you look like, you know, these 10 people, they can do it, then you can do it. That would be mentions talking, right? Or say, okay, look at these 10 people, they are great. He can do it, then no way you cannot do it, right? And the Xunzi will say like, well, you, they, they can do this way, then that educate, through education, through hard time, then you will become like this. And the Digo will say, okay, forget about these 10 people, they only 10. Uh, that's deal with the rest people, put the reward and punishment. So they will be good, nothing goes wrong. So, you know, that's the uh, uh, totally different way of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, CK, please. Yes, I find it very interesting that after the success of legalism in uniting China, after Li Si, there seems to be no other, at least as I know of, like uh, legalist scholars or practitioners who call them, who dare to call themselves legalists. After that, they, they are more shrouded or clouded by Confucianism. Like they, they, they mean they are, are neo-Confucianists, they are later Confucianists, but there seems to be no later legalists or nobody who dared to profess that they were legalists. Uh, it, it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. Uh, could you sort of elaborate on that a little? Uh, yes, and I think so in the 18th, 19th century, there was something called new legalism, but which you take a totally Western point of view on that. So that's another thing. And then you are right. I think one thing happened is Qin united the entire China, right? Use the legalism system. And the Qin dynasty only lasts for 15 years. Let's also give a lesson, okay? Or give the Confucian scholar, okay? An excuse not practice or condemn the legalism because it can quickly unite the state, but it failed in 15 years. So that's another reason. Not only zuo fa zi bi, make a law, kill yourself. And even if it's successful for the state, it only lasts for 15 years. So later on for the 2000 years, all the Chinese scholars become Confucius and scholar. But your question is very valid. Does legalism just die? My observation is no, because the entire government is doing legalism system. Okay. And then they have the punishment, they have a reward, and there's a united bureaucratic system. So that's a very complex situation. I'm, I'm going to stop here. It's not like uh, easy answer is nobody practice legalism after uh, Qin dynasty. And then, so I think we will have further time to discuss this one. It's not that easy to just, you know, we get it just in one section. Uh, we have uh, Daniel and uh, David, please. Uh, Daniel, please. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I don't, uh, understand what you mean by non-action okay yeah. okay because i, I it <laughs> almost says that you know it doesn't matter okay like <laughs> so what how do you apply this non-action in the two extremes I, I don't get it okay okay let me make it clear and you can ask joe right joe probably can. joe do you want to answer daniel's question <laughs> 
you can go ahead and because within the context of Fan Fei, actually, I had a similar uh, a similar question. Okay, I but I believe uh, uh, Joe, right? You have the same question as Daniel. But after in the Dao De Jin reading for a while, I think you have a better understanding than before. I have I understand the non-action and the in the idea of non-interference, uh -huh. um, and so how that would factor in. But I see. Uh, that different than legalism because legalism seeks to control everything the way I, I view it. The so, thing about the, when, you, when the ruler try to control everything, he is not asking the ruler to be busy to, if you think about a manager try to control, a, a ruler try to control everything, the normal way of thinking you may, you become very busy, you must be smart, you must be working hard to do all the detail to everything. But Legals and teaching is the audience is the single person who is the ruler. He say, actually, it's a Wu Wei. Well, you can say that's a sales pitch, okay? You don't do, do anything. You just hide yourself and just control the two handle, reward and punishment, and set up the law. Everybody will do as you want, and you can practice Wu Wei. I think that's the Han Fei. Uh, legalism is teaching. Uh, That's fascinating, actually, because I would have never thought of it from that perspective. I would have thought since you're trying to control everything that you would have more things to do. Um, but if you're only controlling punish, you know, essentially reward and punishment, I guess you're limiting what you're actually managing in a way. So that's yeah, and that's then he, he even they have a more thing to teach, you know, in Han Fei, he, he has a 55 chapter. It's a lot of reading. And his reading is I think it's a very good reading. I think the Western uh, modern's point of view is a good reading, a good writing, because he has a study and make it ideal clearly. They have the logic step by step, and to the end, he has a conclusion, conclusion, and then he talk about loyalty. Okay, he called the small loyalty and the big loyalty. Okay, so if you are loyal, if you give the wine, provide the beauty, that's a small loyalty. You should punish this kind of person. Okay, so he has many, many things talking about this. So his idea is you don't show up that often. If you show up too often, then people looking after you, criticize you, and see you as a role model, blah, blah, blah. You should hide it and be fine. Okay, and have other people deal with that. And what do you do when you hide it? You enjoy your life, okay? And that's another kind of Wu Wei. So I think next week we will get, uh, uh, next time we talk about this, I will get a little bit more. And then if you start to understand uh, the concept of Wu Wei in Taoism. And Han Fei also have a two chapter talking about interpretation of Lao Zi. So he read Taoism and he has his own interpretation. Okay, so, okay. So then do, do, do I answer your question? I'll wait till I'll wait till next week. I, I'm sort of getting an idea. It's almost like be loose, be you know, take it easy. I mean, yeah, I I, I fully understand because uh, for the people in the Western, even in modern uh, Asian society, the concept of way is not that easy to understand because it's not like a sit there, do nothing, everything, but it's kind of has a subtle difference than that. So. Uh, or you, you read the Tao Te Ching, okay, 81 chapter, and you will get much more understand. Okay, so we have uh, Davi and uh, CK, and I will have a CK at the last word. Okay, uh, Davi, please. Yes, Jason Peng, may I ask you, how is it that Confucianism overcame legalism? Can you summarize that for me, that process? Confucius, okay. Uh, three weeks from now, when we talk about Han Dynasty, okay, that's the typ typical time it's happened. Okay, give you a little bit um, historical background. The warring state, okay, they have the seven state fighting each other. Qin, conquer all, become a united so-called the Qin Dynasty. Qin Dynasty only lasts for fifteen years. They are using legal system. Then Han Dynasty replaced Qin Dynasty. Han Dynasty make Confucianism as the orthodoxy philosophy for the state. That's the time Confucius tried to is overcome all the philosophy. 
So that's the simple answer to you. Just like Constantine, okay, make Christian as the uh, legal or official a uh, 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 religion for Roman Empire, okay, the same, the same kind of same situation. So I hope I answer your question, Tabi. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, if you uh, uh, join um, to uh, I, my plan is another after legalism, and then I probably will put the Han Dynasty. Okay, so that's exactly to answer your question. The Confucius take over everything, and then. How does it happen you know, for the United? And very similar in the Roman Empire. When, the, when you have the single government, the sim, single civilization, you have the certain kind of philosophy. So in Roman, it's a Stoicism, right? The Stoicism become kind of like popular uh, philosophy. And same situation, you need this kind of uh, philosophy. Then Confucius become the requirement uh, for the hard dynasty. So I stop here. And uh, we have a CK. CK, you have a final word. Okay, thank you for the final word. Uh, Jason, I, I will try to answer this whole thing about Wu Wei and, and legalism, if yeah, I may. Right. Imagine, <laughs> you know, right. the, the, the Wu Wei is it, not telling everybody in the state not to do anything. It only applies to the ruler of the state. Yes. So imagine if the whole system works, like uh, if, the, if the bureaucrats are applying the laws correctly and the people are following the laws and the uh, two handles are working, the, you know, cr uh, the punishment and reward systems are working and uh, it, everything runs like clockwork. So what is there for the ruler to do other than sit back, relax and enjoy being the ruler? So that, because everybody is doing things, you know, it's, it's not non-action from the point of view of the state. The system works, it's a working system. It works like clockwork. So when it works like clockwork, what is there to do? Therefore, this is Wu Wei of the highest realm. You know, the, 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 the ruler is successful precisely because he doesn't need to do anything. The system works for him. I hope that answers everybody's question because that 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 is the that is the penultimate ideal in of the legalist system. What if it doesn't work? What if there's a hitch somewhere? Uh, it won't <laughs> because if everything is applied correctly, it won't. Well, it's that's an ideal. Too, yeah, that's an ideal. <laughs> yes, he can't just sit there and do nothing. He has to be active and proactive in in the situation in case something does happen, not reactive. Well, if you have a bureaucracy that is doing that for you and they are applying it correctly, you know, and, and the laws are there, if they just follow the laws, you know, if the people just follow the laws, then it worked. That's, that's, that's how it's, it's 